Wine was involved as gift from the gods to mankind. As such, it has sacred attributes. Israel really represents the ancient world, this crescent where wine was so important in biblical times. It's ideal, everything grows here beautifully. A lot of people today have the same goal as I do, to search for the Israeli character. I can find very good wine, very fresh wine. Jesus changed the water into wine, but it took 2,000 years for the wine to be any good. I don't think my father really saw that it's going to be a winery. He's like, uh, okay, let's play. And there was such excitement, and it was such pioneering. 95% of the wineries weren't here 30 years ago. That's just insane. Today, it's moving from search for quality to the search of identity. But the stigma that continues to exist from all the crap that was made in the past is hard to get around. So I said, why don't you put it on the shelf? And he said, because it's kosher. There is no Israeli section. Kosher, Israel, religion, bad wine. If you are a young, emerging, winemaking country, you don't want a lot of laws. It's just religious tradition. Most winemakers are not religious, but they do kosher wine. Many boutique wineries have become kosher. I mean, yes, you can produce great kosher wines, no one doubts it. But there are a lot of emotional subjects that connect into it. There was almost no reason not to do it, except the reasons not to do it. Super talented winemakers who are trained in amazing places around the world can't touch their own wine. The intimacy of this is bad. We are all the same. The story that is not open is going to die. The wine culture should be built now. I think for me and for my father, <laughs> nothing is sacred. Nothing.